let's make another Scratch game. So here I am, again, make a profile if you don't have one already, because it auto-saves and it's really useful. So I'm going to hit Create, and this time around I want to show a different type of control scheme. So last time it was a game where we just clicked to, uh, to do stuff in the game. But now I want to do some keyboard input, because for me, that's kind of more fun. So I'm going to add a sprite, and actually, I like this cat. It's just a top-down view, but that means when it rotates, it will look pretty good. So I'm going to make a game kind of like Asteroids, if you've ever seen that old arcade game where you rotate around and then you press up or forward or W to move forward, but then you press left and right to rotate. And then we'll just make it where it collects different items. So let's see. What would a cat collect? We could have chicks. Those are cute. Um, or is there like food? Tacos? Getting some tacos. There's a wizard taco apparently. I did not know that. Dancing strawberries, oranges, jars of food, glasses of water. My cats like to take our glasses of water, so we're going to start with that. <laughs> so, again, for the backdrop, I like starting with that XY grid, just to kind of get it started off. And we're going to start with events when the flag is clicked. We're going to set both of these up. So we have cat when flag is clicked, glass of water when flag is clicked. So to change between each one's code, you just click them here and you can see whose code you're editing based on this little tiny view of that. So when the cat's clicked, let's start it at the origin, the zero zero position. So again, motion, go to position, and we're going to just hard code X and Y to zero. So no matter where you are in the game, if you reset it, you'll start at the, the center point. For the glass of water, when it's clicked, let's just say go to random position. So every time you go to some random position, or it will go to some random position, and you have to go towards it to collect it. So for the cat. Next we need controls. So there's a couple different ways we can get keyboard input. I'm going to show you the easy way first because um, it's a little bit more intuitive, but it's not the best way to get keyboard input. So when I do this event, when space is pressed, I can change this to different arrow keys. I can do it when up arrow is pressed, we'll go forward. So let's say move 10 steps, that just moves it forward. And if I hold it, maybe you can tell there's like kind of a delay and then it starts moving and it's a little bit jittery. That's part of the reason why this is not the best way to do keyboard controls, but for now it's simple, so we'll just do that and then we'll update it later. So we're gonna do down, we're gonna have left and right. So left and right. So these are again under events, and then under motion, you can say when the down arrow is pressed, we'll go backwards 10, so I can go up and down, or based on where I'm facing, forward and backwards. If we hit the right, oop, I have two right arrows, let's make this left. If we hit the right arrow, we'll turn that way. If we hit the left arrow, we'll turn that way. So then you can kind of move around like this. So I can't really hold the keyboard buttons very well. That's because we're using events for the keyboard and not a nice loop or anything like that, but we will do that in a little bit. So this is, I don't know how adding comments works. Oh, we can do that here. Well, we'll keep these on the side and these will be replaced once we get more of the game done. Okay, so next, we want to make it so that when the cat touches the glass of water, something happens. So we can do two things. We can detect when the cat touches the water, and we can detect when the water touches the cat. So if the cat touches the water, we have, let's see, sensing. 
do, 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 do. Sorry, I have to look for some of these. So it's um, touching mouse pointer. And then we have edge, glass of water, and so on. But this is not a little standalone piece. I can't just snap this over here. This is supposed to go inside of another piece. So when the cat is touching the glass of water, we actually have to add some more information. What we have to do then is in control, you'll see that this is a diamond shape and this has a diamond slot. And it's an if then statement. If touching glass of water, then, and then we can add some code in here. Now, this also isn't quite what we want because I can hit flag and it runs it once but um, it won't uh, execute it all of the time. So for example, let's play a sound when you touch the glass of water, but if I have it here, it's not gonna work. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Okay, so I have this connected to what my when flag clicked. I could do over here. Now it's kind of hard to see everything. Let me move this around a little and that should work but that's not quite what I want either but it can work for now <clears throat> I'm gonna talk to you about loops here in a second but for the glass of water we can also check to see if it's touching the cat how would you do it here there's no keyboard input for the glass of water also, again, remember I can copy and paste to a different thing just by clicking and dragging, and now I have access to this, but instead we'll say if it's touching the cat. So what do we do with these if blocks? We know if we're touching the cat, then, well, maybe the glass of water won't do meow. Maybe it'll do water drop. But how do we get it connected? This isn't going to work. And it works here if I connect it here, but we don't have that option here. Well, the reason this right here doesn't work is because it will check this if statement one time only. So if I happen to start the game and the water happens to be on the cat, it will do it. But this is random, so that might take a while. Uh, let's make this go to zero, zero for a minute, or to the cat. Okay. This will only check one time when you hit when you hit the flag. Of after after the flag is clicked, it doesn't continue checking it any more than that. That's why if you guys don't happen to t start on the same position, it's just not gonna run our code here. What we need is another type of control block. We need a loop. So we have repeat 10 times, but actually since this game is going to be running for, you know, as long as you're playing it, we want to loop forever. So special commands like check for if we're touching a glass of water need to be run forever. And by the time, if I'm clicking the flag, now see this is glowing the entire time because now it's forever checking to see if I touch that glass. Okay, so so maybe I don't want to um, do that. Uh, sorry, what I'm thinking of is maybe I want to change up the water, but here we're also going to add forever, for forever while the game is running, check if the glass is touching the cat. And if that happens, let's just pop it to a random position so it doesn't keep going meow, 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 meow over and over. So, see watch. It's very loud sounds. So now this logic kind of works. Okay. So loops are pretty good. What else can we do with loops? Well, let's say I'm going to just put a loop here. And we're going to have it wait a second and then move for 10 steps. So I have this. It's not connected to anything, but I can test it out just by clicking on it. So it's running every 10 seconds, or every one second, it's going to move 10 steps. It's only going to do this 10 times. Okay, 
C. So you can make a loop if you want something to happen multiple times. You know, maybe you only want something to happen five times or ten times, but sometimes you want the program to continually do something over and over. So this is our first part. If we're touching the glass, then do that stuff. Okay, now that we've gone over that part of the loops, we can also improve our inputs. So we have up, down, left, and right, but these events make it so it's not really very smooth. It also has that delay for the first item. It does it once and then it delays and does it more. What we want it to do instead is inside of our loop, we want to continually check to see if the keyboard is being pressed. So we can do an if statement, if, and then we have to use sensing. If key is pressed, so if the up arrow is pressed, then we'll move 10 steps. So we're going to get rid of these in a second. Now this also has to go inside of our forever loop. So while the game is running, say movement code, um, while the game is running, always check to see if the cat's touching the glass of water, and always check for that up arrow to be pressed. Ooh, see how smooth that was? No, no delay, just was able to go forward. So we can do this for each of the other ones. I'm going to duplicate. We're going to make this the down arrow. It will go negative 10, so now I can go forward and backwards. We'll duplicate again. Make sure that these are side by side and not inside. You don't want this inside. And we want left. So left will be turn. I'm going to remove this uh, move. And then we'll need the right arrow key. And instead of turning that way, we'll turn this way. So then this stuff can all get deleted. I'm just going to get rid of it. So now we have a much nicer, much smoother input control scheme. I can move, I can turn, it feels much more like a video game. Whee! Okay. Now we can add variables again to have a player score. So I'm going to go in variables. We're going to make one called score. And that shows up on this side of the screen. We can also move this somewhere else if we wanted to. When the game starts, I'm going to set the score to zero. So I'm going to add a, this is initialization or setup. Set up the game. Or if you ever see the word init, if you've ever seen that before, that means like to initialize, to set something up for the first time. And then this right here is our game loop. So I'm going to keep that there. Uh, my comments are getting a little messy, so uh, maybe move it over here. That's the game loop start. OK, so we have a score. We have our check for if the cat is touching a glass of water. So if that happens, we're going to change the score by 1. So add 1 to that. So then that will add. Oh, it didn't do it. Hmm, set score to zero. This isn't in the forever loop, so that should be fine. If touching glass of water, maybe it has to be done first. Hmm. Okay, now it's at one. Ah, you know what? I have an idea of why this is happening. Since both of these are detecting if they're touching each other, and the glass moves right away, this is kind of a weird thing to have to worry about, <laughs> but it's possible that the glass moves away and it hits its if statement and goes away before the cat is able to do this stuff. So in here, I'm going to add, let me see, what's it under? Control. We will mm, wait maybe a second. I'm not sure if that's what we want to do. That, that is not what we want to do. <laughs> Uh, but, let me see, we might want to do something else. What would be a good way to handle this? Because currently, you can't 
You cannot rely on it happening in one way or another. <laughs> That's a little bit disappointing. I shouldn't have to explain concurrency <laughs> issues. Uh, okay, well, I have an idea of how we could fix this. Um, if we're touching the glass, let's have this occur. So there is another set. Let me find it. We have clones. We have broadcasts. Okay. I'm going to create a broadcast. So when we collect the glass of water, we're going to make a new message. Water collected. And this is a kind of a way to make our, our own event occur. So we're going to say the water was collected. Everything can listen to see if the water was collected. In here, instead of this if statement, I'm going to put it under when I receive water collected. When I hear from the cat that it collected the water, then I will play my sound and move to a new position. Let's see if that works. Okay, so the way this works is this runs, it says, are you touching a glass of water? Add one to the score, play the meow sound, and then broadcast water collected. Then fourth, this one would go in and say, I have received water collected, I'll play a sound, and then go to a random position. So you can use broadcasting to do a lot of different things. It's basically a way for one sprite to talk to another sprite, um, or even you could have code inside of your backdrop as well. So I clicked on the backdrop. This is backdrop code. This is cat code and water code. So, okay, let's improve this a little bit more. I'm going to change the backdrop to something a little nicer. Oops, that's not really what I meant to click. A cat is collecting glasses of water. That seems like something that would be in inside the house. Uh, I cannot leave my glasses of water unattended because then the cats will do that. This isn't a great background because now, like, yeah! the cat's just flying all over the place. Maybe I can draw one. So let's open this. I'm gonna go into backdrops and I'm going to create a new one. Paint. I'm gonna delete these and I have my drawing pencil somewhere. There it is. Maybe I'll use this. But first, let's just make a square. Can we fill this entire thing? No, I think I have to make a square first. So here's a square. We can resize that and then make this like the floor color. So let's say it's carpet or something like that. So there's our carpet. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I can try to draw a chair. Not sure how this, how well this is going to go, <laughs> but uh, let's say I'll just use a black outline and a small pin. So let's say we have a chair over here. Oh, is it going to draw? Let me draw. Why are you not drawing anymore? That's weird. Oh no, what is that? Is that what I drew? I think I'm drawing, oh no, I'm drawing behind my carpet. That didn't work out. Let's delete that. <coughs> I want this on the back. Hopefully, eh, maybe I'll keep it over here while I'm drawing. Okay, we're gonna go with the black outline. I'm gonna try to draw a chair. So that's like the back of the chair and then the arms of the chair, and then here's the, the cushion. Um, maybe we could have like a lamp. I know it's not, not great, but it's okay for now. So that's like the light bulb. Uh, we could have a nice rug over here. And I don't know, I'll fill this in in a moment. What else could we have? Um, I mean, I think that's okay for now. Let's see if fill works out the way I would hope we'll have a blue rug. Oops. There we go. We'll have a green chair. Let's not let me fill this part. I'll have to investigate that in a moment. 
It'll have a blue lamp. I think that my lines weren't quite perfect enough, so it's angry at me. <laughs> See, I have some lines that are kind of just not connected, so I wonder if I can connect it, maybe? These are connected. Connect these. Don't leave little holes in the thing. Okay. Fill with... We'll do... Oh, oh, I still can't fill the inside. Well, that's unfortunate. We're not gonna worry about this too much. That's that's a lamp. Just trust me on that. And for the chair, now I can fill the inside of that. Um, let's see. I'm gonna maybe just manually draw the inside of the lamp. How does that look? Eh. And then we'll put yellow for a light bulb. There's like a light bulb that's on inside of it. Okay, now I'm gonna move the carpet back. Okay, everything's good. That's my background. How artistic. We might want to move the score counter somewhere not on top of the chair. We can put it down there. Okay, so here's our game so far. Just wander around, collect cups of water. Maybe we need some more challenge than this. So let's add an enemy. What else would go after glass of water? Would a mouse? I don't know, but hey, it's the same style, so we'll use a mouse. Okay, so remember, glass of water, when it's clicked, goes to a random position. Let's put the mouse also at a random position. So it'll start somewhere random. And the mouse, let's say it wants to move towards that glass of water as well. So let's look at control. When the game is running, we're going to repeat forever. It's going to look for the glass of water. So there is a point towards, and we can have it point towards a glass of water. That's a handy feature. Right now it's just going to point towards it whenever it starts. Um, oh, oops. <laughs> Sorry, I had a different thing running. Um, so if I move it here or here, it'll always point towards that glass of water. And uh, now we can also have it constantly move towards the water. So it'll keep doing that. There, it, The glass of water doesn't do anything when the mouse collects it right now. So it's just kind of vibrating over there. I'm going to make it slower than the cat. And we're going to have this update so when the glass of water is hit by a mouse, we also want to update, like, maybe the mouse score. So in variables, I'm going to rename this. I'm going to right click and say cat points. And I'm going to make a new one and call it rat points. We're going to put that on this side. Okay. Now, when this starts, we make sure to set rat points to zero. And similar here, we have, if we're touching a glass of water, we want to do the same sort of thing. We're going to put this over here, and I'm going to put this back together. All of that goes in forever. If the mouse is collecting glasses of water, or touches the glass of water, then we add one to rat points. I guess the rat has a pop sound, and then we also broadcast water collected. So we reuse that same code. The glass of water will see that it's collected, it will play a noise, and go somewhere random. So let's see. So that, it basically will play itself. Um, if we made the rat too fast, it would be pretty unfair, but let's see if we can keep up with it. Oh no, the rat is so much better. So in this case, this is why you would have to make your AI to be less good. You'd have to program in some things to make it not as not as good as you. We could make it slower. So now it's a very, very slow mouse. Or we could make it um, not always go after the glass of water. We could say if the cat is nearby, maybe it does something else. But I think for now, this is simple enough. Oh, 
Did I hit the flag again? Oh, it doesn't reset the rat points. Ooh. So, let's fix that. I accidentally set cat points to zero. I meant to set rat points to zero. So now we all start there. We could also make this so another player controls the mouse. So if we wanted to do that, it would be very much like the cat here. We could copy this stuff to the mouse. So this part would be the AI. This is AI code. Our artificial intelligence. It'll move it towards that. If we wanted to make it so it was controlled by another player instead, we could change this to maybe WASD. So W uh, down is A, left is, or no, nope, left is A, down is S. And right is D, so we can move this in here. And now the mouse isn't going to move, it would be controlled by another player. <coughs> so then two people could play together. So now you have a two player game, or you could add that AI code back in if you want to just make something you can play on your own. But yeah, we could also add like when does the player the game end, but we'll do something like that another time. So I'm gonna go ahead and share this. We're gonna go and click share. I did not give it a name. Let's get call it cat versus rat. So player one cat use arrow keys to move. Player two rat use WASD to move. Collect the water glass to get points. Okay, so again, you can always click see inside if you want to see it. I'll post a link to this in the video, and you can also view the other games at my profile, so I'll post a link to this as well. Okay, thanks for watching. Send me links of what you've worked on. Bye!